Okay, cool. Well, welcome everybody. Holiday recovery guide here. How to boost your energy, how to get back on track after the holidays. Uh, to say the least, uh, it has been very distracting, let's say over the last year. But we had uh, COVID hit and everything that's come associated with that. We've had uh, the whole political stuff. We've had kids in school, back to school, some virtual, some in person. The virtual is talking about going to in person, but we're not sure where we're at. It's day to day. And then now we had the holiday season, which looked a lot different. Raise your hand if the holidays looked a lot different for you that's tuning in. They looked a lot different. We're in January, it's a new year. For some, it still feels like it's uh, December. I don't know, December 49th today. Uh, and it's just kind of one long run on sentence. Uh, but what I can tell you is this, is I'm gonna deliver some very powerful information and you're gonna discover the most powerful, most natural ways to help boost your energy. Because remember, if we're fatigued, tired, exhausted, that is a sign, a body signal that something is off and we're not at our healthiest state. So you're gonna learn and discover some things here. It's gonna add a lot of value to your care you receive in the office and help you stay stronger, longer on the outside and save time, money, and energy in the process. And if that's you, raise your hand again. So welcome, glad to have you here. So I uh, got a lot of information. We're gonna dive right into it. And we just came off the holiday season. There's a lot of stress, different type of stress that's lingering around. Last month, we unpacked what stress can do and how to stay healthy through the holidays. Now we're in the new year. It's how to get your healthy back and uh, strengthen your body because right now more than ever, we want to be healthy. We want to be strong. We want to have a strong body, a strong immune system with everything that's going on. Because if we don't take care of it, that leads into what? Typically this time of year, colds and flus and other things start to show up. So let's, uh, let's dive into this graphic. This is a very sobering graphic right here. This graphic here shows what stress and around the holiday season will do to you or could do to you. And so here's a graphic. Um, and this is the daily cardiac deaths in the US. This is from 73 to 2001. We look for more up-to-date information. We couldn't find that. This is what we have available. And it's obviously worse these days, but let's take a look here. As you follow this graph from left to right, you look at July, this is the number of deaths from heart disease. It's still very high, don't get me wrong in July, but it's the lowest here in this infographic. But you can see there's a crescendo and the peaks are right at Christmas and New Year's Day are the number, the top two days for cardiac deaths in the US. And then after the holidays, January and February and all the way into June, it starts to taper off. That's what they call holiday heart syndrome. We talked about it last month. This is the impact, the real life consequences of what unmanaged stress building up over time becomes chronic does to your health and well-being. It erodes it. It moves you away. And why? Because of the three T's of stress, thoughts, traumas, toxins. We are living in a deficient and toxic world these days that is completely moving us away from high-level health and wellness. Tonight, we're going to unpack and uncover strategies, and you're going to discover what to stop doing, what to start doing to really elevate your health 2021. So what is the holiday hangover? What are some of the symptoms that you may exhibit? Well, raise your hand if you have any or one, uh, multiple or all of these, but exhaustion, fatigue, you're tired, you're just run down. No matter how many Red Bulls or pots of coffee or five hour energy drinks that you are consuming. Headaches, okay, uh, migraines, it could be sinus, it could be uh, tension headaches, all types of headaches, cluster headaches, colds, flus, starting to get the runny nose, allergies starting to pick up. How about digestion? Digestion uh, um, off. It could be heartburn, uh, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, anything where the digestion is off. Weight gain, 
Okay, over the quarantine and through the holidays, we call it the holiday five, which is usually the typical five pounds that people put on. I heard the quarantine 15, quarantine 19. So our lifestyles have radically shifted and especially through the holidays, things start to get more condensed and packed and then stress is building. Other things is if you, you are or know somebody that is more irritable, they're in more pain, they're more anxious, or sadly, there's a lot of depression going on right now. If that fits you or you know anybody, raise your hand because we've been seeing this all over in the clinic these days. So we're going to talk about some strategies to overcome this. And what are you told to do? Basically, you're told to keep pushing. Just put your head down and keep going. Ignore the symptoms or take some drugs, you know, throw some drugs at it. Maybe that'll stop the symptoms or quiet them down a little bit. That's a risky proposition. We'll dive into that later. Maybe you just ignore it. Maybe it'll just go away uh, or suck it up, you know, suck it up. Just keep going. And then, or, you know, like, look, here's the deal. It's the new normal, right? That's what we're told. But I want you to consider that these body signals are symptoms. The symptoms are signals from your body that says, yo, time out here. I need you to pay attention inside now. That's the acronym for pain. Pay attention inside now. The symptom is not the problem. So if you're a note taker, you might want to drop that as a nugget in the chat box, but the symptom's not the problem. The symptom is the effect of the underlying root problem. So if you take a look at the iceberg right here, the tip of the iceberg, the ice that's exposed above the water is the symptom. This is what people and how people present into the office. This would be the exhaustion, cold flus, headaches, digestion, weight gain, irritability, pain, anxiety, depression, among many other things that's going on. Underneath the water, what you can't see is the underlying root cause of this problem. And if I do my job today, it is gonna be very clear in your life where there's gaps and what to do to start closing those gaps to lead you closer to high level health and wellness. I love this chart right here. This is the wellness paradigm. So we need to get our terminology on the same page here. There's a big difference between health and not being sick. And we're gonna talk on that in just a moment. You see the medical paradigm, the treatment paradigm is basically managing symptoms. And once you're symptom free, you are released from care. The wellness par paradigm takes a proactive approach to help you achieve high level health and wellness. So let's take a look. A lot of people start noticing signs in their body. So let's say they, they're tired, they're fatigued, they're run down. Uh, maybe they're noticing more stiffness, lack of range of motion in certain joints or many joints within the body. Then if it goes uncared for, then the signs regress into a symptom. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about here. That means that that stiffness is not stiffness anymore. The stiffness now becomes a pain. And that pain can lead to numbness and tingling, weakness, and other things. And left alone, if that symptom is not dealt with, if the symptom is masked, if we're just looking at how we're feeling and not how we're healing, that symptom, you might feel better if it's managed through drugs, but it becomes a disability because the underlying problem has not been addressed. This is your chronic issue out there. These are your chronic problems. And in the medical or allopathic paradigm, and there is a need for that, and we're gonna get into when that is appropriate, they manage the disability, but you're not getting healthier or better, which ultimately leads to a premature death, loss of quality of life. You're not living life to the fullest. But I know each and every one of you here tonight are action takers. And you're not going to let anything stand in your way of high level health and wellness. So number one, being here tonight and carving an hour out of your schedule for you is a big first step. This is to create an awareness. Doc, where am I exposed? Because you see, exposure is going to lead to your greatest growth. You want to look at where the gaps are. Don't cover them up. Don't hide from them. Get really honest with yourself and where you're at. And then doctor means teacher. This is about education. You're not going to hear this information out there. Okay. 
You're not going to hear this from your medical doctor. Great people, but you're not going to hear it in that model. So I'm going to share it with you some great information that I apply in my life, my family's life, my team's life, and what we recommend to our patients to help them and you achieve high level health and wellness. And this is all about growth. I remember one of, uh, I went to a seminar and I heard somebody say either you're green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. So are you, are you growing? How are you going to grow? How are you going to expand? What do you know needs to change, must change in 2021 for you to achieve the next level of your health and wellness? Tonight is all about, and all these body signals programs that we do once a month is all about educating you how to achieve high level wellness. If you want that, raise your hand. So here's the premise. Here's the premise. Our premise is this. Our premise is that healthy is normal. Sick is abnormal. Sick has become the new normal. But I want to remind you that you are designed to be healthy. Your body is smart. It's not stupid. It's super intelligent. And it always responds appropriately to the environment that it's in. If it's in, in a healthy environment, it responds healthy. If it's in a sick environment, guess what it starts to do? It starts to exhibit signs of sickness, illness, and disease. The master system, the master control center in your body is your central nervous system. Your spine is the suit of armor that protects those delicate nerves. And we can all agree that modern life is unnaturally stressful. It was unnaturally stressful prior to COVID and hands up if it's become more stressful since COVID. Can you believe that we're 10 plus months into this? It's like, wow, you know, it's amazing how our lives have been shaped differently over the last 10 plus months. So there's three sources of stress out there, thoughts, toxins, traumas. Let's unpack it. And let's get into some strategies that you can start applying today to add to the high level health and wellness. Number one source of stress are your thoughts. We need to get a checkup from the neck up. Let's evaluate the six inches between your ears and be honest with yourself. Where are you at? You see, we have four limited resources out there, time, energy, money, focus. Now think about how all these are impacted at various times throughout the year. And think back to the last couple months through the holidays. How was your time? How was your energy? Where is your focus then? How about money? All these can be influenced throughout the year. And these are your reserves. These are limited supply right here. And we're hardwired to be economists. And we have a limited amount of this. So we want to be looking at how we're spending in each one of these categories here, because it will, in fact, determine your high level wellness, if we're able to achieve that or not. When you're under stress, your body takes on a physiologic change, and this is hardwired for survival in our body. And in the short term, it's actually a very healthy, normal, good thing. So think about if you're being chased by the saber toothed tiger. Now, I'm not sure if humans were ever chased by a saber-toothed tiger, but you hear this all the time. Your body takes on a different physiology, right? So what's going to happen in that fight or flight? Is your blood pressure going to go up or down? It's going to go up. Is your heart rate going to go up or down? It's going to go up. How about your muscle tone, up or down? How about your digestion? Is that going to be up-regulated or down-regulated? What about your sleep hormone, serotonin, up or down? Right? You can see it's decreased. Your sensory systems, your, your sensory for pain, okay, that is heightened. It goes up. Fear and anxiety is raised. You become immunocompromised. Remember that term. More on that in just a few minutes. Insulin sensitivity changes. Your blood sugar goes up. Decrease the HDL, the good cholesterol, and increase of the bad cholesterol. Your clotting factors go up and your sex drive goes down. Now, if you put all this together, this seems like the perfect storm for a heart attack or a stroke or diabetes. 
these are the chronic conditions that are plaguing the U.S. and the world today because modern life is unnaturally stressful and we live in a toxic and deficient world. And this is what it leads to. Cardiac deaths, stress, stressing the system moves us away from health. But we also had something recently stress the system called the coronavirus, COVID-19. And if you really want to see how strong a system is, you must stress it. And what we've learned are a lot of things right here. Unfortunately, we have learned that not only are Americans unhealthy, but people around the world are very unhealthy. COVID-19 exposed the system. And with all the information out there, there's a you don't even know what to believe these days. What is fact and what's not fact? What's true or not true? Between the medical world or the news or research or where all this data is coming from in news, what is truth out there? There's a lot of confusion. There is a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of doubt. There's a big information gap. And so that leads us to a lack of certainty. And when, we're, when we have a lack of certainty, then we don't know what steps to take. And so we seek to hide, we seek comfort, and we end up choosing those lifestyle habits that are not necessarily healthy for us, which drives us further the other way. But look, what we learned, and there's more information, there's more data coming out every single day that is helping to teach us about what is going on with this and how to strengthen our body, help to protect us. That'll determine whether you get the coronavirus, whether you exhibit symptoms, how severe, whether you get into the hospital or even whether you die from this. This data is irrefutable and it's coming out every single day, not only in the US, but around the world from millions of patients. And it's teaching us a lot about our exposure right here. And we're just not healthy as a population, not only in the US, but around the world. This is what exposed us. And what we can tell is that the COVID-19 and coronavirus is very contagious, but it's very dangerous to a select group of people. The select group of people is what you call the immunocompromised. These are people that carry one or more chronic conditions, comorbidities. That would be things like, hypertension and diabetes and hyperlipidemia, coronary artery disease, renal disease, dementia, COPD, cancer, AFib, heart failure. These are the people that are really exposed to then the severity of this here. And so these comorbidities make our bodies immunocompromised, which really all those symptoms and conditions are what no, are known as metabolic syndrome. This is a cluster of symptoms here that occur together, like increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excessive fat around the waist, especially with sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is a loss in muscle mass, abnormal cholesterol and triglyceride uh, things, and, and it increases your risk of those chronic conditions, heart disease and stroke, type two diabetes, and death from viruses like COVID-19. And what's happened is we've taken a chronic condition in the US and around the world, and now we've shifted it to the right, that's what COVID's done, and it's made it an acute crisis. So my question is, is that are we, are we masking the real problem? Now, are we masking the real problem? We were, were told to wear masks to help keep us uh, from getting sick, but what unfortunately we forgot is that we already were sick. So WTF. I know that's what you're thinking. We're spending all this money, $2 trillion plus dollars on quote unquote healthcare, and we have this crisis. So WTF, where's the focus? Where's the focus? We must shift the focus from the strength of the virus to the strength of the host. You have absolute control over the host, that's you. And we're gonna get into the start doing and stop doing list of what you can do to help strengthen your body, produce more energy, help your immune system work stronger, help support it, keep your body functioning well. But we don't have any control over the strength of the virus. 
So we need to shift that focus on what we can do rather than what we can't do. So there's three tiers of health, and we're going to talk about this briefly because the treatment of disease, the sole focus here is keep people from dying. That's it. That's why we have allopathic medicine is to help keep people from dying. Then the second tier and approach to healthcare is prevention of disease. This is wearing the mask, social distancing, no hugs or high fives, and uh, sanitizing everything, hand washing. Although prevention of disease, treatment of disease is important and relevant at certain times, neither do anything to strengthen the host. This is where we come in. Our focus is about promoting health, talking about lifestyle behaviors and action steps that you can take daily to help produce better health outcomes because your health outcomes today are an accumulation of the choices that you've made in the past. So we're talking about health promotion. And there's lots of reasons that we're in a healthcare crisis. And, but number one is personal responsibility. We can group all these reasons uh, that we may come up with into three categories. One is lack of personal responsibility. Now, I know each and every one of you, you're taking responsibility. So I'm not talking to you. I just want to honor you for being here, taking notes, learning things, how you can become healthier and stronger. But we got to take personal responsibility because when we don't and we send that responsibility off to somebody else, you know, to a spouse, to a to your medical doctor, to your lawyer, to your accountant, to McDonald's or Starbucks or your insurance company, they're not going to make changes for you. We must make our own changes. And if I'm doing my job, I'm inspiring you to see the big picture here towards high level health and wellness and what you can do and what action steps you can take right now to improve your health and wellness. So that 2021 is your healthiest year. 2021, you have the most energy that you're able to do the things that you wanna do and stay safe and healthy in the process here by strengthening your body and being as strong as ever. Because now, now is the best time. If, if there was ever a time to take care of your health and strengthen it and continue to grow, now is the time. Another reason we're in this healthcare crisis today and why we're exposed is we have a big misunderstanding about health. There's a huge gap here in our understanding and definition of health. You see, most people think that you're healthy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and like a toggle switch, you get sick. And then on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're sick. And then on Monday, boom, you're healthy again. That's not telling the whole picture. Most likely, you go from not sick, and when you're under stress, like being through the holidays, transitioning into the new year, trying to find your rhythms and routines here, when the stress overwhelms the system, you go from not sick to sick. And there's a big difference between not sick and high level health and wellness. Few people actually achieve high level health and wellness. Most of the people are walking around not sick until then we get sick, until we exhibit a symptom. And this is where the immunocompromise com lives. And remember what we said, COVID-19 is the most dangerous to who? The immunocompromised. And then there's a third reason that we're in this crisis. I'm going to save that for later. And if I forget, I need somebody to raise their hand, call me out on it, and remind me at the, at the end here. So I want you to finish this sentence with me. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you'll keep getting what you've been getting. That's absolutely true right there. Definition of insanity right there, right? doing the same things over and over and over and expecting different results. If you want different outcomes, you must change what you're doing, your approach. So if you're a note taker, this is the time that you're gonna create three categories, take your page, lines, two lines down the center, three columns, and on one column, you're gonna title it stop doing, the middle column, it's gonna be slow down, and then start doing is going to be in the far one. So you're going to look at stop doing, start doing, or slowing down. So think about over the past four to six weeks through the holidays, heading into the new year. I know you know what you need to be changing. I know you're smart. 
and I'm going to share some important information. And the most important part of it is you're going to take some space right here to slow it down before you speed up. Because we know modern life is unnaturally stressful. The days go bing, 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 bing. What I don't want to have happen is, boom, there's some sort of crisis that causes you to slow down. So let's be intentional here. Let's slow it down a minute. And this is the start doing, stop doing, or the yellow light, slow it down a bit. So here, I'm gonna give you my best tips of how to think well for recovery. Number one, choose your attitude. So we made these bracelets in December and they're called the attitude of gratitude. And if you didn't pick one of these up, next time you're in the office, ask us for one of these. This is really cool to wear this around your wrist as a reminder that you have a choice of the attitude you put on every single day. People ask me, Dr. B, you always have a great attitude. But look, I have a choice every time I get out of bed. Do I want to have a good day? Do I want to have a bad day? I like having good days. I like having great days. So I choose the attitude and the attitude is of gratitude because the attitude of gratitude determines your altitude. So think about what you have control over, what you are empowered with, this is about giving you back personal responsibility tonight to add to your high level health and wellness. Connection, acceptance, respect. These are innate qualities that we desire. And right now, unfortunately, because of the social distancing and everything that's going on, is that connection is kind of, we're spaced out a bit. But I wanna tell you that our, our souls, our health and well-being craves connection. It, it craves hugs, physical touch, Okay, so we can use some technology to connect that's better than isolating, that's for sure. And, you know, acceptance comes in of just accepting the things you cannot change. Because there's so much stress that is that we produce in our own lives by trying to change the things we can't change. You may want it to be 60, 70 degrees outside. It's not going to be right now in January unless you change latitudes. But how about enjoying what you already have? Accept it. Gratitude journal. Many of you received a gratitude journal in December. If you didn't receive one of those, raise your hand. We'll get you one of those. But write down five things daily that you're grateful for. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to be just sharing some knowledge with you to help inspire you to take your next steps in your life so that you achieve your health and wellness goals and achieve more energy, achieve your highest quality of life and happiness and joy in 2021 and beyond. And you know, it's uh, the whole adage of see one, do one, teach one. That's how you become a master at this stuff. Remember, learn this stuff, apply it in your life and then teach another person. Unconditional love. This is tough for many. But love people without conditions. And you know who this applies to the most? Yeah, I'm looking at you. It's you. Love yourself unconditionally. Give yourself some grace. Give others grace. Nobody's perfect. So as we're going through new, new year, a lot of things are going on, a lot of moving parts, a lot of stress these days. Give yourself, give others some grace. It shows some unconditional love. Affirmations, affirmations are I am blank. Whatever you feel that, you're affirming. Make sure you're saying things to yourself. I am love, I am happy, I am joyful, I am healthy, I am energetic. I can do all things. And my good friend Jeff on here would say is, why is it so easy for me to have a great day? These are affirmations. And so an affirmation is you're asking the question, affirming what it is you're looking to attract. Why is it that I make great choices towards my health all the time? Start asking these strategic questions to see how your life improves. And then meditation, this is my secret weapon. Now, here's best practices. I'm just going to share what I do. But if I don't wake up at five o'clock and jump out of bed for the opportunity for the day that I'm given and do my power hour, it's never gonna get done. I call it my core four 
And so I do these things of gratitude journaling and um, uh, meditation and some of these other things in the morning. It's how I power up before my day. So I ask, Doc, are you just naturally energetic? I have a strategy for it and I'm sharing it with you now. These are things that I apply in my life. You can ask my family, my friends, the team around here. These are the things that I do my best. This is a game of progress, not perfection. One step at a time. So if I were you and you were looking for one thing to take away, just grab one thing off of this list, start applying it tonight, tomorrow, and make it a rhythm because your behaviors lead to your outcomes. We got to talk about sleep here, obviously. You need to protect your rhythm of sleep, such as the time you're going to bed, the time you're waking. Now, there's a lot of ways we can go in this direction, but keep it rhythmic. So I know my body now is hardwired, 5 a.m., I'm waking up, I'm grateful to wake up and have that time alone in the morning before my whole house wakes up. So that time alone helps me power up, strengthen, Get ready for the challenges that are going to come my way. So protect your rhythm. Wake up at the same time, go to bed at the same time. And you're wanting to get six to seven hours of sleep per night. You know, as they say, early to bed, early to rise makes a man or a woman healthy, wealthy, and wise. So consider going to bed earlier to get up earlier. See how your life changes if you give yourself some space in the morning to do the important things so that once things start to creep up in the day, the urgent comes up, you still give time for yourself. Be fast. Please take a break from this, especially 30 to 60 minutes before you go to bed. So your electronics, power them down. Take naps, taking naps throughout the day. That's one of my secret weapons. I put on some meditative, uh, music or guided meditation, shut off the lights. Uh, 16 to 17 minutes is my sweet spot. Wind down from the morning shift, get ready, power up for the afternoon shift. And make sure you know you're not trying to put five pounds and you know what in a four pound bag. Who's guilty of that one? I'm, I'm raising both my hands up here because when you overcommit, you stress the system, stress your body. So whatever your capacity is or whatever size of glass that you're carrying, let's keep it like that. 12 ounce, 12 ounce. Now try to put 20 ounces in it and check your expectations. A lot of people are walking around unhappy, unfulfilled, not full of joy because of unmet expectations. Are there things that you're expecting from people or yourself that are just unrealistic? Is it time to refocus, set some new expectations and agreements? One of my mentors told me great relationships begin with clear expectations and honest agreements. Sometimes it starts with ourself. Is it, do we need to call a timeout with ourself or some of our important relationships in life just to say, I need to get on the same page. I need some clear expectations and agreements. Let, let's talk about this here. I have a crucial conversation. It's a great book, by the way, if you're knowing that you need to have a crucial conversation with somebody or a team, it's a great book. Highly recommend it. So now when we take a look at, we just went through sources of stress with thoughts. Now we're going to slide into toxins here because illness and disease and weakness in the body and breakdown and deterioration, disabilities and symptoms, they all come from toxicity and deficiency. So if we want high level health and wellness, the answer is simple. We need to become sufficient and pure. But now you're probably looking for some direction of how to get there. Let's dive in. So we want to eat well for recovery here. This is going to energize our body. So, all right, never go hungry. We need to have a conversation if we're strategically doing this and in intermittent fasting because there's value there. But what you want to be careful of is just skipping meals, breakfast and lunch, and just saving it for one big meal. Because a lot of times all that stress is building throughout the day. You get home and it's time to unwind and decompress and de-stress. And we're grabbing the things that are full of sugar, high carbs, 
bad fats, just plain unhealthy for us. And that starts to add more stress and toxicity and deficiency. The battle's won at the register. Just remember when you go out shopping, don't go hungry. I've misstepped here so many times. I've bought in so much stuff that I didn't really need because I was hungry at the time. It looked good, right? Don't drink your calories. So take a look at if you're consuming uh, wine, liquor, alcohol, uh, beer, um, sodas. I guess in Michigan, if you're from the Midwest, we call it pop. They were like, pop, what are you talking about? You mean soda? But don't drink your calories. Avoid the white stuff, the white flour, white sugar. Very pro-inflammatory. Pro Here's a nugget for many of you out there. If you want to know why you have pain in your body, why you have stiffness, it's because we're eating pro-inflammatory food. And when your inflammation goes up, your pain goes up. When your inflammation in the body goes down, your pain goes down. And your inflammatory levels are directly correlated to your lifestyle behaviors. So you want to fill yourself with healthy food. So you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? Cool. Eat well for recovery. Unlimited vegetables. Wide variety. Lots of colors. Try new things. Get creative here. Vegetables have a lot of phytonutrients, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals that help strengthen your body. Plenty of lean cut protein like meats and fish, eggs. So beef, make sure it's grass fed, chicken, organic, fish, wild caught, eggs, uh, grass, uh, free range, organic. Those are the best ones, right? You can have some fruits, nuts, and seeds. Try to get the fruits that are in season and avoid those refined carbohydrates and sugars. When you're stressed, your body craves these things. That's why you feel like going to a vending machine and you could eat every item in it when you're stressed. Or you go to the pantry and you intend to grab one cookie and you grab one sleeve of cookies. Who's guilty of that one? Or you go and you're like, I'm going to do something good. I'm going to get a little bowl, put my potato chips in it. And then you leave the bowl, that small bowl of potato chips in your pantry and you grab the rest of the bag. All right, who's guilty? Okay, we've all been there. So supplementation is vital these days. You're just not going to get the nutrients required for optimal level health and wellness through food alone. Our food has become very deficient in certain minerals and vitamins. So I recommend probiotics. This helps your gut flora, helps your digestion. So if you're not taking a probiotic, we have a great one here by Nate Choice. Take one in the morning, take one in the afternoon. That when we're stressed and we're eating the wrong things, then that can lead to an overgrowth of the bad bacteria, the bad gut flora. You've heard like yeast infections and, and bacterial problems within your digestive system. Why is this so important? It's because 80% of your immune system lives in your digestive system. So if your digestive system is weak, your immune system is compromised. And COVID-19 is specifically dangerous for who? Okay. Your vitamin D, make sure you're supplementing with 10,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. The best source is your sun, okay, the sunlight. But unfortunately, at this latitude in Northern Virginia, with it being the winter, the shorter days, you're just not going to get enough sunshine. So you need to supplement. And the research is very clear that those that are the lowest in the vitamin D levels are most susceptible and vulnerable to the negative consequences of viruses like COVID-19. Supplement with the multivitamin, multimineral. Make sure you get a multivitamin, multimineral that are, that's whole food based. Not something that's isolated vitamins made in a lab, but something that comes from food because there's other synergistic things that work with, let's say, vitamin C to help amplify the effects. And fish oil, hands down, fish oil, turmeric. See, a lot of people have unchecked inflammation raging in your body. And this leads to stiffness, this leads to pain, this leads to poor recovery of the tissue. 
So even though you might feel better at times, once you go use your body, your joint, then that symptom comes right back. So fish oil is an anti-inflammatory. Most people today, the US for sure and around the world, they have way too many omega-6s, which are pro-inflammatory compared to omega-3s. The ratio is like 18 to one, 20 to one. It's just way out of balance. Your ratio needs to be two to one to one to one. So fish oil, we recommend three to 4,000 uh, um, milligrams, three to 4,000 milligrams of fish oil per day. That's a lot. So I recommend that you talk to myself or Dr. Travis to make sure you're taking a high quality supplement because not all supplements are created equal. You get what you pay for here. You truly do. So we recommend in a choice, the omega and D deficiency, uh, sufficiency, omega A and D sufficiency, and then extra vitamin D to give your body the essential nutrients to make it sufficient and pure so that your body can function towards high level health and wellness. When you're deficient in this, when you're toxic in this, it leads to more inflammation, which moves us away from high level health and wellness. And our third form of stress right here is what we call traumas. I think when I say trauma, you get an image of something like this. A bad fall that could be down the stairs, that could be walking on a hardwood floor, that could be a wet spot on the floor, concrete, those type of things. Could be a car accident. When I talk about car accidents, even if you're thinking of fender bender years ago, only five miles an hour of impact can actually cause a problem in your body. And even if you feel okay afterwards, doesn't mean that you're gonna heal okay. And an incident like that could lead to a big problem down the road. Other traumas would be sports injuries, concussions, broken bones, sprains or strains, and then being born. By a show of hands out there, how many of you were born? Well, we all were, right? And so birth is very traumatic, not only for mom, but the baby. And 80% of children born are born with some sort of birth trauma. And that can have real consequences and how it impacts spinal function and nerve function. Because remember, your suit of armor is your spine. And each one of your vertebrae protect the delicate nerves that your brain is sending down your spinal cord. And if that suit of armor is stressed, it can cause a misalignment and start to impact the way that the communication signals are happening from the brain to the body. This is a condition in chiropractic called subluxation. So we're gonna use a safety pin here to demonstrate what health is and what a subluxation is and what Dr. Travis and I as wellness chiropractors look for. Here's your health right here. Here's your brain and here's your body. Your brain and body communicate through what system? Can anybody tell me what system your brain and body communicate through? It's your nervous system. And when that cycle is closed, it's called ease or health. But because of thoughts, traumas, toxins, or the big category of stress that overwhelms the body, it can start to create a disconnect in the communication which the brain and body are no longer communicating at 100%. And therefore the health and healing signals are interrupted in your body. This is a condition called subluxation. Say it with me, subluxation. A subluxation is a misaligned bone that causes a disconnect and interference in the function of the nervous system. Dr. Travis and I's role is to identify if you have subluxation, adjust that misaligned bone, and educate you on what specific lifestyle habits cause your subluxations and screw up our work that we're doing with your adjustments in the office and what you can do on the outside to start doing to help your adjustments hold better and exhibit high level health and wellness. So a subluxation is a joint misalignment that injures and damages the soft tissue, ligaments, tendons, the discs, 
and nerve, causes inflammation, inflammatory response, and spasms the muscle. Now, I want to let you know this is a very healthy and appropriate response by the body when you get a spasm. I know it may not feel good, but what is the primary role of your muscles? The primary role of your muscles in your body are to act as movers, to move the joints. But when there's an injury, remember we said the body is smart. So is it a smart thing when there's an injury in your body for those muscles, instead of moving the joint, to actually act like a strap to lock it down? To me, that's a pretty intelligent design. You take a muscle uh, relaxer when this is going on, sure, you might feel better, you might move a little bit better, but the underlying problem is getting worse while you're feeling better, which can lead to more ir nerve irritation, lost imbibition, the disc starts to dry up, there's not as much blood flow, there's more toxicities in the disc, the joint becomes stuck and fixated, that's where that stiffness comes in, and we elevate the stress hormones. Remember all that physio physiologic change that happens under stress? This happens with subluxation. So we can have a normal healthy disc right here with good spacing in between those bones right through here to allow for ample room for the nerve to exit. And that's what the disc is. It is a spacer. But over time, if we're not taking care of this, it starts to degenerate and causes a disc bulge, which can turn into a herniation, which really compromises the opening of that nerve. So if we're talking like I-66, having four lanes normally, it can get down to two or one, which is gonna put stress on your nerve and it takes just the weight of a dime of nerve pressure to reduce nerve flow by up to 60%. And the scary part about it is you don't even have to have pain with it. Right here, your disc, the outer wall starts to break down and then the disc starts to push off to the side. This is not an overnight process. This is weeks, months, years, decades of a breakdown in your body and your body heading in the wrong direction towards illness, disease, disability. And there's the cascade of things that happen and what during the um, examination process, we look for to see where individuals are at as we identify the root cause of your problem. So as we mentioned, subluxation causes a stress response. And I want you just to focus on the one word, immunocompromised. And COVID-19 and viruses like that are specifically dangerous to who? It is the immunocompromised. Remember, the sick and not sick and toggling between that, this is where immunocompromised people live. We're on our way to high level health and wellness and health is a lot more than just not being sick. Subluxation, it causes irritation and affects your body's innate ability to heal and remain healthy. So does this look familiar? Who's guilty of this one right here? Anything like this look familiar? Anybody? A laptop? Okay, absolutely. A phone? How many, how many guilty of this one right here? Okay, for hours. Okay, laptop in bed, anybody? This one, this lady's laptop on the sofa. Anybody guilty of this one? This one feel familiar? Okay, stress? <laughs> All right, so maybe you're at home, maybe you're working from home, you're an extrovert who's been isolated, maybe you're working from home and your kids are virtually learning, you got one eye on them, you got one eye on work, all kinds of chaos and stress happening today. Modern life is unnaturally stressful. The, the stress that happens physically is the microtrauma the repetitiveness of this stress over time. Sitting has become the new smoking. Who's guilty? Take a look at this posture, okay? It's that banana-shaped curve. When you're sitting down on the couch or laying in bed, that's putting extraordinary stress on your spine. But it's become common, so we think it's normal, but it's not normal. 
And this is what's leading to a slow roar in your spine. It's kind of like, you ever heard that the story about the, the frog in hot water? You know, if there's boiling water and the frog jumps in it, it's going to live because it's such a shock to the system that it jumps right back out. But if you take a frog and the frog is in lukewarm water, and then you slowly turn up the temperature of the water, it happens at such a slow rate that the crisis can't be avoided because there's not a big shock to the system. That's just like what happens with this technology. It's slowly eroding our health and wellness. So it causes extraordinary mechanical stress on the bones, the discs, the ligaments, tendons, where in the neck and the rest of the spine and pressure on the nerves. So a 10 pound head normally starts to feel like 50 pounds to the spine. It's a lot of mechanical stress. And that mechanical stress has consequences. That mechanical stress is taking a normal, healthy, functioning body it causing a disconnect right here. Who's guilty of plugging in too many appliances into an outlet? And what ends up happening? Who can tell me? Any of your circuit breakers ever trip? Well, consider that your spine is the electrical panel that contains the circuit breakers to your body. Is it a good thing when one of these circuit breakers trip? Absolutely not. So when the external stress of life, thoughts, traumas, toxins, start to exceed our internal resistance, this is where we start to exhibit the signs and symptoms of the holiday hangover, the fatigue, the exhaustion, the tiredness, the burnout, a weakened immune system leading to colds and allergies and sinus infections, which increases pain in our body and leads to more anxiety and depression affecting our digestive system, sex drive, and other things, and moves us away from high-level health and wellness and into the category of immunocompromised, disability, breakdown of the body prematurely. So as we talked about, the safety pin is when your body is at ease and when the body and brain's connected, and then dis-ease happens when there's the disconnect. The adjustments reconnect, and then we educate to teach you what to do and what to avoid in between your visits so you get better results faster and longer lasting results and spend less time, money, energy, and focus in the process so that you get more of your limited resources back by investing in yourself and your health and wellness. So many of you know, um, have a question. So maybe you're a current client, maybe you invited a family member to be watching this at home with you. Maybe you shared this link with a loved one. And I'm sure many of you have thought of a loved one if they're not on here tonight, of like, wow, I wonder if this person has subluxation or this person could be helped. So how do you know if you have subluxation? Well, there's no guesswork here. There's a science to it. And our discovery process unpacks the objective measurements of if you have subluxation and harmful nerve stress and pressure that's robbing you of high level health and wellness. So we do this through motion and static palpation. This is when Dr. Travis and I were moving the spine, feeling the joints, looking at posture. We use a piece of technology that measures your core score how your body is adapting to stress, and then we take x-ray. So a great strategy, and in fact, I'm gonna argue to say the most important strategy to boost your energy, to help your body recover from the holidays and keep your body high level functioning and adapting to stress is keeping your spine well adjusted, keeping your chiropractic adjustments in rhythm. So make sure that you're following the doctor's recommendations based off of only two things. When Dr. Travis and I make your recommendations, we do it off of your health goals 
and our objective findings. We put those two things together to help you achieve a plan and a strategy to help you achieve high level wellness, not only for January, 2021, not only for the year of 2021, for the years of the life that you have. So that you're just not getting by in life, that you're not just coasting, that you're not just surviving, that you're thriving, you're full of health, you're full of energy, you're full of joy, you're full of happiness. Who can see it? Who can feel it out there? We're your health coach. And if we're doing our job, we have a very strategic plan for you to follow. We give you high fives to celebrate, uh, virtual hugs when you need them. And sometimes your coach here might need to put you in a headlock just to make sure that we're staying in, in integrity in our expectations and agreement so we can hold you accountable what, to what you came to us seeking help for. And we do it all with love and gratitude. So if you have a loved one in your home that's not been checked, I recommend you get them checked. If you have a family member who's struggling with any or many of these things, recommend you get them checked. And if you're a first time person and a guest that's being introduced to our office and this message is resonating with you and you're curious about your health and what you could be doing to promote health and wellness at an optimal level for 2021, I recommend that you come in, get checked, let's sit down and discuss your health and wellness goals. You see, we talked about there's a third reason. Remember, there's a third reason for a healthcare crisis these days. Maybe it will just go away. A wise doctor once told me, procrastination is the thief of health. Don't put this off. The best time to take care of your health is now. There needs to be an urgency. It's not tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. Today is all you got. And if you didn't take care of your health and you're feeling guilt and shame, give yourself some, some grace right now and just let it go because it's not going to serve you. The past is the past. The best time to plant the oak tree was 50 years ago. The second best time is when? It's today. So if you'd like to get set up or you want to set your family members up for a new patient breakthrough health experience, then what I want you to do is on your next visit, talk to us. Send us an email and we'll get that set up. We'd love to help. This picture right here, was uh, taken in Michigan, if you can believe that, during Thanksgiving. This is my why. This is why I get out of bed every single day, come to this office to help lead you, help lead your families. I love my family dearly, my wife, Eros, Kleeston, Kyson, and to help lead them to be as healthy as possible. I've been put on this planet with a big purpose and a big mission to help educate and adjust as many families as I can to achieve high level health and wellness and to inspire them to take the action steps that they can take and empower them to help support their care here in the office that leads to optimal health outcomes. Today is the day. I'm very excited and honored to be on this journey with you. And on behalf of the team here at Pure Chiropractic, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned next month. We got a, got a special treat for you on the next Body Signal Workshop. It's called How to Boost Your Immune System. If you want to know the secrets of how to boost your immune system, do everything you know that you can do to keep your immune system functioning optimally, it starts with having optimal energy. So start applying the things that we're teaching you here tonight. Start adding this in one by one. Talk to us on your next visit. What did you learn? What was your golden nugget here? What is your big takeaway? What is that aha moment? Because it's been my experience is it's usually the one thing. It's the one thing that tips the tides, that makes all the difference in the world. You start applying that consistently over time, 
leads to big health outcomes down the road. I love and appreciate you all. We're here to serve you. If there's any way that we can support you any more than we are right now, please give us a shout out. Let us know. Have a great night. Love and appreciate you all. Thank you very much.